Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. I am here with the Viscount Legend 70s Artist W model over here. There are three different models available in the Legend 70s series. And this is the W, the Artist W, which indicates wood keys. Let me go over the three different models. And by the way, the way the video is structured, um, if you look at the description section below here, if you're looking at this through an external link, be sure to check you or click on YouTube so you can get to the original and look at the description because I have a clickable video index there. That way you can skip what you want and go directly to other things that you do want and so on and so forth. Let me go over the three different models. The compact, which is 73 keys, it's hammer action, velocity sensitive, triple sensor action. The Artist 88 keys, also hammer action, velocity sensitive with triple sensor. The one I'm using here is the Artist W, W standing for wood. So if you go ahead and depress a key, you can see the wood on the sides of the adjacent key. This is more appealing towards a pianist, which is my specialty, I'm a professional pianist, not just because of the wood, but because out of the three models, this is the only one that has graded keyboard action. Graded meaning it's heavier in the bottom end and lighter in the top keys, just like a real acoustic piano would be. The other two are more designed to emulate the feeling of a Fender Rhodes or a Wurlitzer, one of the pianos back in the 70s that this is trying to emulate. So and it makes perfect sense. But if you also want that and want the authenticity of a acoustic grand piano, the Arches W is the way to go. And of course, <laughs> you're gonna pay for that a little bit more and that's to be expected. This does have an optional stand that you can get for it. And it looks really retro and it's really nice. And here's what it looks like on that stand. Now what does come with this is you get a really nice sustain pedal. It, it's an on off switch basically, but it's a really nice thing. And you get uh, a music holder, which goes into these two prefabricated holes over here that is set for this to go into. And it's got this nice V to indicate Viscount. Now the only thing I would want to improve on this music holder, take a look at the way I have this right now. This is a really nice flat top, and I love that because you can put another synthesizer on top of this or another key bed. You can put a laptop on there. You can do a lot of things because it's nice and flat. I love that. And as you can see, I've got a, a keyboard here for the laptop that's kind of out of your reach. You don't see that right now. But I've got a keyboard and look at where my mouse is. I don't want my mouse over here, I want it here. So one thing I can immediately see in a need for improvement is to simply just drill two more holes here in the back. It'd be a really simple thing for Viscount to do and have the music stand in the back. That way I can have things in front and I still don't obscure my vision of the music. So I think that would be a really cool, that this is one of my two recommendations for improvement. And I'll get to the other one later, but this I think would be great to have it in the back. That way I can have all kinds of stuff in front. Now, all keyboards, the 73 note compact and the two 88 note, they all come with the basic configuration, which is basically, you've got the main controller module here. You've got the electronic piano or e-piano module next to that, and the sound collection module next to that. Everything to the right of that is blank. You can add modules, which is so cool. This is the first of its kind where you can actually 
add modules. And in fact, if I don't like the configuration I have in front of me and I want the controller more in the middle, I can do that. I can move it <laughs> and move the other things to the left or the right or whatever. But as far as adding modules, it is so easy to basically add a module. Let's take a look at how that's done right now. So adding or replacing a module is easy. You unscrew the top bar, then you unscrew the two screws. In this case, it's a blank that we're putting in. And we hook up the ribbon controller cable that's already in there. Place it back in place. Put the two screws back in. And then when you're done with that, replace the top bar, put that screws back in, and you are done. Adding a module in is so easy. It comes with the three that I already showed you. And you can add external modules, such as this one has the clavi module added. It has the acoustic piano module added. And it has the external module added, which turns this into basically a master keyboard controller. Very cool. They're also going to be coming out in the near future with a synthesizer module. And I am so looking forward to that. And the possibilities for other modules after that is just endless. Personally, I'd love to see an organ module with draw bars on it and all that stuff, but that's getting ahead of ourselves for right now. Right now, let's wait for the synthesizer module to come out and see what that's like. Now, before I go into this keyboard, I think it's really important that you understand the back panel because I'll be talking about things like routing in this video, which you'll understand once you know about the back panel. So let's go over what the back panel is comprised of. Going from right to left, we've got USB-A and USB-B. USB-A is for like a device, like uh, a thumb drive or flash drive. It's also used to update the keyboard with. You download stuff, put it on that drive and update the keyboard. It's real easy. USB-B is what you use to connect this to your computer or host device. And you'll want to do that because they have an excellent software editor that really enhances what you can do with this. And I'll be getting into all of that stuff in this video. All right, so next to the USB A and B jacks, you've got your legacy MIDI in and out jacks, your five pin DIN MIDI jacks, which is so cool because a lot of manufacturers are bypassing that these days. And since this is basically a legacy or um, vintage type of keyboard, retro and everything, those all used MIDI connections and those are so important if you want to connect to external devices other than your computer, you actually need those legacy MIDI jacks and you've got that here. All right, then you've got foot controller one and two and since those are controllers, those are CC or continuous controllers, things like expression pedals, that sort of thing. Next to that, you have two foot switches, foot switch one and two. Next to that, you've got your sustain pedal. And the sustain pedal that I'm using is a half damper. It's actually a Roland uh, DP10 sustain pedal. So it's a half damper. And you can calibrate this here so it's perfect and so on and so forth. Then next to that, you've got a program plus minus pedal. So basically, it's a TRS connection with a pedal. Basically, we have two switches or two pedals. One of them will take you back and the other will take you forward when you're choosing programs and that kind of thing. And it will also work with a regular switch pedal as long as you can only go in one direction, you can program it to go backwards or forwards, but not both. So it's best to get um, dual pedal or dual switch. Then there's the main outputs, the left slash mono and right. If you're just using the left, it's a mono signal that's summarized of the 
left and right together. If you're using both the left and the right, then you get a true stereo connection, left on the left and right on the right. Then there's an aux out, so you have an aux one and aux two, and there's an aux in, which is an eighth inch TRS stereo input. So it's important you know that whole back panel configuration, and you can come back to this for reference. Now, as far as physical modeling, the electric piano and the clavinet are physically modeled. So you have full polyphony on that, or as Dexabell might say, unlimited polyphony. All right, everything else is samples, and they're using high definition samples for everything else, and they've done a great job with that. Now, as far as the different sound modules, You've got the electric piano, which has Rhodes and Wurlitzers, that kind of stuff. You've got the sound collection module. You've got the clavi module and the acoustic piano module and then the external module. Now, I want to point out of all those modules, the sound collection module is so cool because it's not just a single sound module. It actually has two in there. You can choose sound collection one or two. So you can take one sample from one of the sound collection and take another and layer it. So that is really cool. One sound module, two different sounds from within that module can be layered together all in this single module. And we'll get to that when we come to this in the, in the video. As far as the acoustic piano module, it features grands, baby grands, uprights. Dynamic and brilliance control that are on here make for great controls for real-time adjustments. And I'll show you that when we get to that. And there's additional controls and parameters in the software editor. So when you get one of these, the very first thing you want to do besides plug it in, try it out, and make sure it works, is go on to the Viscount website and download the software editor for this because there's so much you can do for that. In fact, it is so integral a, por a portion of what this is all about. I'm going to be including that in today's video so that you can see the different views and what you can do with that. Now, Everything is laid out really intuitively. So if you're going to be using a DAW or an external sequencer with this, they've already defaulted the MIDI transmission and receive channels on these modules such that the electric piano module transmits and receives on MIDI channel 2. The sound collection, and again, there's two of them, sound collection 1 and 2, They'll transmit and receive on MIDI channel three and four. The clavinet will transmit and receive on MIDI channel five, and the acoustic piano will transmit and receive on MIDI channel six. So starting out when you first turn this device on, in fact, I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, we're gonna start from scratch. I'm turning this on and watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seconds. We are ready to go in six seconds. Now I'm going to go to the software editor up here. We're going to connect. We are hooked up via USB cable. And that USB cable carries MIDI and audio, mind you. And when we first come up, we're in program mode. This is something that Casio would call a registration or Roland would call a scene. And there's different kinds of things, but basically program mode, a program is basically a sound or sounds and all the configurations that you have set up with it, like uh, keyboard velocity and effects, all that kind of stuff, it's all stored as a program. So, just going over how programs work. And, and before we get to that, let me just get to the, to the basic layout of this keyboard. 
So everything is modular and it's in sections. This is the control section right here. This has the master volume for the whole keyboard. It's got a three band equalizer, which is really cool. And it's a lot more than just meets the eye. I'll get to that in a minute. We've got a reverb section for effects. And then we've got a whole effects section over here, including tremolo, chorus, flanger, phaser, wah, amp, delay, and others. Then we have the um, amount that we can put in and the rate. And there's two different effects altogether, effects one and two. Now, as though that's not enough, <laughs> this is really cool. These effects can be routed such that if you're using effects one and effects two, effects one can be fed into the input of effects two. So you've got a serial path there for effects, or you can choose a parallel process, whereas whatever your signal is, you're feeding it into both effects one and effects two at the same time, and then merging it when they're done. So that is so cool, either serial or parallel. And you can see that right over here. There's serial and parallel when you can set that up, not just for effects, but for each different section, which is so cool. You can set these effects up for just the electronic piano or the e-piano and the sound collection or the e-piano and the sound collection and the clavi or any two of the three or one of the three and add the acoustic piano, same thing. I mean, that is so cool. I've never really seen that done in a uh, keyboard like this before. And looking at the keyboard, you can see you've got the keyboard, you've got all these different modules that are plugged in, and you've got a pitch bend and a modulation wheel here too. All right, so you can do a lot with that. All right, so like I said, we, we're starting in program mode. And let me go over into the uh, software editor so that you can see what program mode looks like. All right. And although I can do a lot of stuff right here on the front panel, I can do the same stuff here on the software editor and a lot more. So let me show you, cause it's easier to show you everything that's available here on the software editor. Um, and it's easier to do, I mean, it's not bad to do on the board, but it's easier to do and see everything in person when you're looking at the software editor. So looking at this, you can see that everything is set up in banks. You've got banks A through P which give you 16 different banks, A through P. And each one of those has up to 16 different memory locations. So you got bank A, one through 16, bank B, one through 16, bank C, one through 16, and so on and so forth. And when you get to bank O and P, those are empty because you can go ahead and save stuff of your own into those banks. So let's just go through some of these banks. Bank A, and you take a look at these, and you're basically looking at roads, that kind of thing. Mark 1 Natural, Mark 1 Phase Suite, and anything I click on, like, let's say, the Mark 284. You can see it, it, it automatically selects all that, and, and that's what I have right now. And if I look at Bank B, I can see that's, you know, more like Whirlies and CP80s, that kind of thing. So let's just click on like a 68 Whirly. Bank C has different kinds of pianos to it. I've got a grand piano here. And if I go into bank D, 
I can see I've got claves and some other kind of stuff, jazz and organs and all that kind of. Really some really cool stuff. Here's a harpsichord. Bank E has uh, more organs and actually, let's see, let's go with a plenum 16 foot. Very cool. And let's see, Bank F has some guitars and different amps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, G, you can see vibraphones, marimbas, all that kind of stuff. H, ensembles and strings. And I, choirs and ahs and gospel ahs and gospel oohs and doos and bahs and uhs and ums. So you can do stuff with that. Vocal pads. Uh, Bank J has horns and brass, that kind of thing. Bank K, and this we got some synth stuff over here. Let's try... Well, anyway, you can play around with this. It's not just what you pick and that's what you hear. The effects and everything you can do to tailor this sound, you can make it sound much more authentic. And L, you've got some pads and that kind of thing. M, you have claps. N, you have all these different pianos. Here's a grand piano right here. got some really nice sounding pianos on there. Now bank O and P, like I said, are empty, so you can store stuff in there. But you can also store stuff right over existing banks. If you don't like the way it is, you can modify it and store it so it's always there for you the next time you go ahead and bring that in. But getting back to the pianos in N, all right, let's go over. Here's a US-1 mellow piano. So you can see there's it's usable for pianos. You can do a lot of different pianos here. So you're asking yourself, why would I want to buy an acoustic piano module if I have these pianos built in? Well, that's a good question. Let's go ahead and explore that. I am on, well, let's just go right back to grand piano. Listen to this. And I've got the sustain pedal on. See how fast that is decaying? Now I can change that. I can control part of that uh, sound envelope and make it take a little bit more time to decay. But if I go into the actual piano module here, let's go over here to acoustic piano. Now I have, I mean, it's labeled piano one through piano eight, which is not really descriptive. But I can choose in these eight slots from 16 different pianos that are included with the acoustic piano module. And you can see what those are right here. So this is US Grand right here. I've got the sustain pedal on. Look how much longer it takes to sustain. Much more like a real acoustic grand. 
not only that, but I've got these controls here labeled dynamic and brilliance. So I can actually choose the dynamics and the brilliance of each one. And not only that, I can control the stretch tuning, the release time, the release noise, the pedal noise, and the damper resonance. So this is an example of where the software editor would come in. And it's really cool. They've got some really nice pianos here. So let's go to a German grand here. It's sounding so brilliant. Let's do a little less. And they have some really, really nice sounding pianos here. Uh, one of my favorites here is this Japanese concert. So, and again, manufacturers don't usually go off and say this is a Steinway, this is a Yamaha C7, this is a Bosendorfer, and this is a Fazioli, and so forth, because it's something to do with copyrights. So they'll go ahead and include the country of origin, and you can pretty much guess U.S. Grand might be uh, the Steinway New York, and uh, German Grand, well, that could be a Steinway or it could be a Beckstein or whatever. So, and Japanese Grand could be a Yamaha and so on and so forth. And here's a nice honky tonk. Now that doesn't sound right. Let's go ahead and add some reverb. So you can see, there's a lot of stuff you can do just with piano. All right, now let's get into these different modules. I'm gonna start with the controller module. We have three modules that come with whatever one of these that you're purchasing. It's always gonna come with these three modules, the controller module, the electric piano module, and the sound collection module. So let's start out with the controller module and see what we can do with that. All right, so of course we have the master volume, which controls the volume of all the modules. So whatever volumes you have the individual modules set to, this will raise all of them from the reference point that each one is initially set at. Oh, and before I get into that, I just wanna show you how easy it is to layer sounds. Since you have different modules here, let's, let's turn off the acoustic piano. Now we have nothing. No, none of the modules are turned on. So I'm going to turn on the electric piano. And let's give it a Rhodes 5. And I've got an individual volume control for that. Now, if I go ahead and turn on the sound collection, and let's say I want strings with that. You can see what kind of strings I'm choosing. It's pizzicato. Trio concert. String machine. Okay. Alright, so now we've got two layers, and because the sound collection has two different choices, I can go to choice two now, choose something completely different like an organ. And when 
whenever I'm on Sound Collection 1, the volume control controls that. When I choose Sound Collection 2, the volume control controls that. So you can see with different volume controls, if I go to one, it snaps back to whatever that one was. If I go to the second one, the volume snaps back to what that one was. <laughs> so this is really powerful stuff. Right now, with two different modules, I've got three layers set up. I can turn on the clav, and now... Now I've got four layers, and if I turn on the acoustic piano module... Not that I would ever do this particular combination, but just to show you that I can layer five different sounds at once. Not only that, when you have the external module that controls two different external synthesizers or keyboards, you can add two more sounds to that layer, giving you seven. I mean, how cool is that? That is so cool. So let's turn all of this stuff off. I want to just work with a single module at a time. All right, so let's get back to the controller module. Let's go through that and see what this does and how it fits in. On this controller module, which has its own display, this own, its own OLED display over here, and you can see what bank and program, bank N and program one. So we're gonna go back to program mode and we can see N01 is US Grand Piano, just like it says here. And on the screen here, I can set a split point if I wanna go ahead and split the keyboard. And that's easy enough to do here too. I just press split and hold it and then press the key that I want for a split point. So that's real easy to do. You don't need the software editor to do that. Besides the master volume, next to that, you've got a three band EQ low, medium, and high. And while you can do that here on the keyboard, let's just go ahead and go into the system parameters here so that you can see, get a better visual of what's going on here. You can set this equalizer so that it is equalizing in terms of peak or shelf. And that is so cool. When you're using peak, you can set a cue point for low, mid, or high frequency, and then go ahead and use the adjustments here to go around what that cue point is set at. Or you can use the shelf, and from there you can set what the low, mid, and high frequencies are that you want to default to, and then you can adjust from there. All right, then there's reverb. So when you're in the reverb section, You've got all these different kinds of reverbs that are available to you. You've got room, hall, stage, plate, spring, and tape. And once you've chosen one, you can control how much dry or wet setting to apply to it. And it gets better than that. So let's go ahead over here into the menu. We're going to press edit and we're going to go into effects. Okay. And we can see right now, we have a choice between serial and parallel, like I was mentioning before. And that is so cool because serial, you're feeding the effects of effects one into the effects of effects two, and it's processed that way. Whereas with parallel, you are processing both simultaneously and then summarizing the effect together. So you've got a lot of tremendous control over there with that. And when we get to the reverb section, another thing. See, we have room and hall and stage and plate and spring and tape and all that stuff. Well, let's go into hall and we can go ahead and alter that further. What type of hall? Medium hall? Hall, medium hall, 
and from there we can go small, medium, large, and so on. Then we can control the time. We can control the high damp, the EQ low gain, the EQ high gain, the dry wet parameter, and it's just so cool. If I go into the stage reverb, now I've got choices with stage. What type of stage? Um, stage one, stage two, and so on and so forth. Time, high down, all the other stuff is identical. And if I go into like tape, right now, tape one, tape two, analog days where you've got the reel-to-reel -reel, and then you've got the playback head feeding back into the record head <laughs> and that's what tape is all about all right then we've got the effects we've got tremolo chorus flanger phaser wah amp daisy and others so when we turn that effects on let's get out of here let's go into effects and there's the parallel serial that I was telling you about. Now, this is why I wanted to get you familiar with the back panel. Because as far as these effects go, they can be routed to a whole bunch of different things. Right now, this is being routed to the main left-right outputs. But I can route it to aux 1 as a mono signal. Or to aux 2 as a mono signal or to both aux 1 and 2 as a stereo signal. So I have control, and this is basically per section over here, which is really cool. Now, the effects don't have to apply to the entire keyboard. If I want to apply the effects just to the sound collection, I'm going to go ahead and hold the effects button and turn on the sound collection. And you can see effects one just lit up over here. All right. And if I have effects two set for something, I can go ahead and do the same thing. And I can see that effects two just got turned on. And, of course, you have the amount and rate for each one of these effects that you can apply. Now let's go into this program section. As I mentioned in the beginning, when you tur first turn this on, you are in program mode. So here's... This is really cool. Let's go into program mode. You've seen this already, where we can choose whatever instrument we want through these menus over here. So for the sake of simplicity, Let's go ahead and just, you know, U.S. Grand Piano. And that's through the sound module. Split point, master clock, master tempo. This is where you can control each of the pedal configurations on the back panel. So, soft pedal. This is FS1 or foot switch 1. You can choose whether you want it off. Sostenuto, soft FX1 on, FX1 tap, FX2 on, FX2 tap, reverb on, module on, that kind of stuff. All right, and the same thing here with the foot switch 2. You can choose what you want to use that for. Then there's foot controller 1 and 2. I'm using my foot controller 1 pedal as an expression pedal, but you can use it as a modulation, after touch, FX1 amount, FX1 rate, FX2 amount, FX2 rate, reverb, dry, wet, module part one or module part two, okay? Then there's the foot controller two destination, same kind of choices, just a different pedal to be assigned to whatever you want to assign to it. Then the modulation wheel isn't just for modulation, you can assign it to any of these things as well. So anyway, that's program mode where you get to go ahead and choose what you want from these A through P banks and whatever 1 through 16 sounds are within those banks. Now, once you're in there, 
you can go into song mode. Song mode is a layer above that. And song mode, basically, whatever song you have, and you can give it a name, these are acoustic piano pack, electric piano pack one and two, whirly pack. But this is just to give you an example. With, an elect with acoustic piano pack, I have four different pianos assigned to that. On piano one, I have a grand piano. On the two, I have a romantic piano. Three, I have a rock piano. And four, I have a piano and pad. And on any of these, I can change that to any sound in any bank. So in other words, I can have four different sounds from the entire board available to me in a song. And the reason for that, this, this one just demonstrates that this is a acoustic piano pack. But if I have a song and I'm playing in a band and I know I'm going to be doing a piano for part of it, I'm going to do an organ for the organ part, and I might be doing some pads and maybe something else, those four instruments I'm going to put in here so that I can go ahead and play them when that part comes up. Any four sounds can go into there at any time. Okay, I have the next song, four more instruments for that. Or, like they have it over here, I want my choice of four different uh, roads or four different pianos. You can do any four that you want. Okay, and let's take it a step above that and go into live mode. Okay, we have lists, and each list contains a bunch of different songs and each songs and each song contains four different samples in there so this is really cool this is really designed to help with your live performances so now that we've covered live song program let's go into timbre okay now timbre we have Electric piano, clavs, and acoustic pianos. So if I go into electric piano here, so let's go into the electric piano module here. You can see that when I get into the electric piano, I have choices here of road one, two, three, four, five, whirly one and two, and E grand, which is really cool. And if I'm just operating this module and I'm on road one, go into road two and road three you can actually see on the software portion here in the editor exactly what I'm getting so all of these first five roads those are what's on here one two three four five a road mark one a road rust Road Mark 2, 74, and Extra Time. Okay, and for each one, let's say I go into the Road Mark 1, I can control the stretch tuning, the hammer, the time position, the tone bar decay, the tone bar resonance, the release noise, the pedal noise, and the natural, and so on. And the same for each one of those. So I've got a tremendous amount of control here. Not only that, I have my own independent bass and treble EQ over here. Not only that, I can go ahead and turn tremolo on and control the intensity and the speed. I can go ahead and turn the amp on and there's a lot more controls that I can go ahead and fine-tune the amp with as well and then I can go ahead and get into my sound collection module which is really cool I can go ahead and turn that on 
I have all these different categories to choose from, eight to be exact, pads, strings, choirs, brass, keys, organ, bass, and others. So in each one, I've got up to 16 different sounds to choose from. So let's start with the pads. We're going to go into the sounds collection. And every time I go ahead and change the category, you'll see it change over here. Pads, strings, choirs, brass, and so on and so forth. Now we see exactly what we have within that pad category. Go to the next one in that pad category. It's the reson resonant pad, square pad, poly pad, and so on. I go into the strings category. We can see string ensemble. and so on and so forth. There's a lot of stuff here. Same with choir. Oz. Oz. Brass. All the different kind of brass. Go into keys, and again, this is our different pianos and stuff. Let's go into organs. And here is one of my favorites. <laughs> Actually, let's let's give this some reverb and a lot more bass, and we've got a pipe organ. <laughs> go even deeper with a 16 foot one.
And we can give it a lot more reverb to give it that nice haul. Let's go into haul. Really nice. And then there's others like acoustic bass. Next is the clav section, and I'm not really a clav type of person, but let's go into here and explore. And I've got reverb on, probably don't need that much. And there's buttons here like brilliant. Treble. Medium. Soft. C and D. And A and B. And that's just one. There is a second clav that you can go ahead and configure as well. So, not being a clav person, but I can show you what there was here. And again, you see the, all these, these familiar symbols that go across all of them to show you that you've applied the effects, effects one or two on here. It lights up if you have. Um, also, it lights up if you've done transposing, if you've transposed the key up one or more, or down one or more, it shows up over here. And, of course, split keyboard. You can hold the split and split the keyboard so that you choose your own split point, but you can assign each one of these to either the lower or the upper portion of the split. And again, like I showed you earlier, when you're not using split, each one of these different categories of sounds can be assigned to its own value of keys. It can be here or here or the whole keyboard or part of it and it can overlap with everything else. The acoustic piano module. Turn that on. I showed you this before but let me turn this off for a second I'm going to go into this sound collection that comes with every Viscount keyboard we're gonna go into the uh, we're gonna go into the keys section and like I showed you over here in the sound collection we can pick the timbre all right whatever pan timbre we want let's go with keys let's go with a grand piano reverb whatever we want to it all right and with all of the sounds in the sound collection we can control the reverb send we can detune it note shift velocity sensitivity per module sustain pedal on or off pitch bend on or off mod wheel on or off not only just mod on or off but what we want the modulation wheel to actually do foot switch one and two, foot control one and two, and so on and forth, so forth, volume. So we got a lot of control, but the reason I wanted to show you this, I've got the sustain pedal on, look how fast that sustains, I mean, how fast that decays. Now I can go into here and start editing that, the, uh, the sound envelope, so that I can make it just 
sustain just a little bit longer, not too much longer. This is why you want the acoustic piano module. Let's turn this off and go with the acoustic piano module. I'm holding the sustain pedal down. Look how much longer it is lasting before it decays. And of course, with that, I also have dynamics control. And brilliance. So I have a lot more control, and if I go right back into the acoustic piano module, the timbre section, these are the different pianos I have available to it, like I showed you before. U.S. Grand, U.S. Stage, these could be U.S. Steinways. German Grand could be a Steinway, it could be, uh, could be a Beckstein, could be anything like that. Japanese Grand could be a Yamaha. Then we have combinations, piano, pad. So this is what you get when you get the acoustic piano module. You got a lot of different stuff here. And it really, really sounds good. And with the control of brilliance and dynamics, you can really tailor this to what you want. And this Japanese concert, this is one of my favorites. And last but not least is the external module, where this module turns your keyboard into a master keyboard controller. And boy, <laughs> you've got control of everything here. You've got your own separate volume. Uh, you can turn it on and off, of course. Um, and then you can send things like port, channel change, bank least and most significant bytes, program change, and then you have three continuous controllers that you can set for whatever continuous controller you pick. And the values for those are here in controller one, two, and three knobs. Then over here, you can pick values for different things. Now that's just one, there's a second one. So if you go ahead and press the second one, you're controlling a second set of external parameters. Now it could be to the same keyboard, it could be to a different keyboard, but these are external keyboards. So this thing is very well equipped to handle just about any situation you're in. And the retro look to it, and especially that flat top, I just love it. All right. 
So again, let me go back to the two gripes that I had. I think I've mentioned one of them already, and that was with the music rest. Basically, the music rest, they have these uh, two pre-configured holes here where you put this in, and you can rest your music here, which is really cool. I love it. But I lose all of this space here, and this space in the back becomes dead space. So I would really prefer if they could make the two holes farther back so I can put the music rest here like this, and then I have room to put things like my mouse up front, maybe a, a phone or some other notes. And it wouldn't really bar, be hard to do at all. The second thing that I'd like to see is the um, transpose function. I really don't want to have to go into a menu to get to transpose. And even though it's not bad, it's only like a, a, a couple of switches to get to transpose. I would really like to see a dedicated transpose button right on the front panel. That makes it so much easier. And it could be a global transpose or it could be hold it and whatever module you're on to connect it just like you do with effects. That would be cool. But overall, in summary of this whole Viscount Legend 70s series, I'm, I'm actually in love with it. When I first got this, I spent the first two weeks just getting lost in the sounds. There's so much I can do, and I haven't even begun to show you the half of it, but I hope that what I have shown you is going to be a, a, a nice introduction so that you understand what this thing is really capable of. And I'll try to put out a couple of other videos on this in the future. But in the meantime, know that uh, the bottom line on this, this is a complete go. A complete go. If you are considering things like Krumar or Korg's SV2, you've got to check this out, especially with the modular design where I can have what I want, where I want, when I want. <laughs> it's just, it is so cool. So I hope you learned something from this, and I really enjoyed doing this. Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.